Welcome to a Legendarium special about the history of Labor Day. In this special, we will talk about the surprisingly radical roots of an American holiday. Labor Day 2021 will occur on Monday, September 6th. Labor Day pays tribute to American workers and is observed on the first Monday in September. Ironically, the day originated during one of the most dismal chapters in the history of American labor. During the late 1800s, the average American worked 12-hour days and 7-day weeks to barely get by. Despite restrictions in some states, children as young as five or six toiled in mills, mines, and factories across the country, earning a fraction of what their adult counterparts did. People of all ages, especially the very poor and recent immigrants, faced dangerous working conditions, insufficient access to fresh air, sanitary facilities, and breaks. Coal mining was especially dangerous. In many coal towns, miners believed that the ghosts of those who perished before them haunted tunnels, still working them. They further believed that some men could see these phantom miners and would not work in haunted tunnels, believing the ghosts warned them of impending collapses that could kill dozens. As manufacturing supplanted agriculture as the wellspring of American employment and wealth, Labor activists grew more prominent and vocal. They began organizing strikes and rallies to protest conditions and force employers to renegotiate hours and pay. Many such events turned violent during this period, including the infamous Haymarket Riot of May 4, 1886. During this tragic event, several Chicago policemen and labor activists died after a bomb planted by an unknown person exploded at a labor rally. Four activists would be hung for murder during the trials that followed the clash. After the Haymarket riot, labor radicals around the world began celebrating May the 1st as Workers' Day, which U.S. government officials had no interest in supporting. Four years earlier, on September 5, 1882, 10,000 workers marched from City Hall to Union Square in New York City, holding the first Labor Day parade in U.S. history. They had to take an unpaid day off to attend, though the organizers compensated them with plenty of beer. The New York Times reported, The windows and roofs and even the lampposts and awning frames were accompanied by persons anxious to get a good view of the first parade in New York of working men of all trades united in one organization. Other states began holding such parades since the authorities found this version of Labor Day far less threatening than May Day. By 1887, Oregon, Massachusetts, New York, New Jersey, and Colorado made Labor Day a state holiday. The idea of a working men's holiday celebrated on the first Monday in September caught on in other industrial cities across the country. Many states passed legislation recognizing it, for political leaders hoped a single day off would mollify an increasingly angry labor movement. The U.S. Congress would not legalize the holiday until 12 years later when a watershed moment in American labor history brought workers' rights into the headlines. In 1893, during a nationwide recession, George Pullman laid off hundreds of employees and cut wages for his remaining workers at his namesake railroad sleeping car company. Meanwhile, he refused to lower rents or store prices in Pullman, Illinois, the company town south of Chicago where many of his employees dwelt. Angry Pullman workers walked out in May 1894. The following month, the American Railway Union and its leader Eugene Victor Debs declared a sympathy boycott of all trains using Pullman cars. This effectively halted railroad traffic in 27 states. On June 29th, some attendees of a dub speech in Blue Island, Illinois, set fires to nearby buildings and derailed a locomotive. U.S. Attorney General Richard Olney used the excuse as an incident to ask for an injunction against the strike and its leaders, which he received on July 2nd. The following day, President Cleveland dispatched federal troops to the city to enforce the injunction. Supposedly, he thundered that if it took the entire United States Army to deliver a postcard, that postcard would be delivered. 
With the arrival of federal troops, the Pullman strike turned bloody, with rioters destroying hundreds of railroad cars in South Chicago on July 6th. National Guardsmen fired into a mob on July 7th, killing as many as 30 people and wounding many others. In the wake of this terrible unrest and to repair ties with American workers before the midterm elections, the U.S. Congress passed a law making Labor Day a legal holiday in the District of Columbia and its territories. On June 28, 1894, President Grover Cleveland signed it into law, seeing it as a way to mollify angry working-class voters without imposing upon the well-heeled businessmen who financed his campaigns. The bill's authors chose September to celebrate the holiday to avoid the radical celebration of May Day, the anniversary of the infamous Haymarket Rite. More than a century later, the true founder of Labor Day has yet to be identified. Many credit the co-founder of the American Federation of Labor, Peter J. McGuire, with the idea, while others have suggested that Matthew McGuire, a secretary of the Central Labor Union, first proposed the holiday. Regardless of who first suggested it, Labor Day is still celebrated in cities across the United States with parades, picnics, barbecues, fireworks, and public gatherings. For many Americans, especially children and young adults, it marks the end of summer and the start of the back-to-school season. Today, with organized labor declining in numbers, Labor Day focuses on activities rather than parades. The National Hot Dog and Sausage Council says that between Memorial Day and Labor Day, Americans eat 7 billion hot dogs. The Uniform Monday Holiday Act of 1968 changed several holidays to ensure they would always be observed on Mondays so that federal employees could have more three-day weekends. The act, signed into law on June 28, 1968, moved Washington's birthday and Columbus Day to fixed Mondays each year, along with Labor Day. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.